so this is a bit of a weird video because it's about something fundamental to many countries the idea of the inherited monarchy and now if you're a monarch or family member thereof in a democratic country I do not hate on you I hate on the institution that leads you and you're potentially even trapped in so again when we talk about monarchy there are definitely two kinds of them you have the absolute monarchy and the constitutional monarchy also known as parliamentary monarchy uh, the absolute monarchy is the type in which the king has absolutely all power and basically can do whatever they want without even being responsible to anyone except maybe God Allah or something similar but even then they don't care about that at all they only care about their own power the second type of monarchy the constitutional monarchy is for example the Netherlands where the king technically has power but has through a constitution delegated that power away from themselves and onto ministries and the parliament so as per se even the constitutional monarchy to be clear the absolute monarchy is an outright dictatorship that should disappear from the world just like single party republics but even the constitutional monarchy raises a couple of questions is it really democratic does it really represent the people and the country in the way a head of state is supposed to do and what does it mean for the descendants of the royal family let's talk about that today number one and i'm going to say it's the most important thing for last who is the monarch responsible to well in absolute monarchy the uh, responsibilities of the monarch are held by no one they're the absolute top in power and can do whatever they want right but in a constitutional monarchy even there though there are limitations as to the political power of the monarch their actions and thoughts have no nothing of harm to the monarch as long as it's not physical harm uh, rather the responsibilities for the monarch are held by the government and thus that basically means that the monarch can do whatever they want basically as long as they're not influencing the uh, political spheres directly and all of a sudden it's only the government who has to give an excuse whereas normally uh, when a person does something that they shouldn't have done that causes damage or that's potentially illegal they themselves are responsible for healing it that is how people learn by mistakes because they realize that what they've done feels wrong or perhaps is perceived wrongly it can easily indicate that they all change in this way but the monarch not so much we've had many scandals related to monarchs not following the rules the government set out for example uh, in the Netherlands alone there was uh, Prince Bernhard who was basically a very bad landlord holding hundreds of houses hostage and renting them out at very high prices next uh, our very own king went on vacation during a coronavirus pandemic uh, the royalty doesn't have to pay taxes um, more on that later but they also for the taxes that they should pay they have tricks to evade them and in fact it's only the government who has to spend time talking about it. time in fact that is better worth introducing a solution to actual true problems for example climate change or you know global pandemics or that sort of thing you know so that is perhaps one of the more important things but do you know if 
the monarch is even suitable for their job at all if they just come down from the bloodline and it's the eldest offspring of the king who becomes the next king to an extent. No, kings are not tested, or queens are not tested on their ability to hold the title of head of state. Speaking of which, as the offspring of the monarch, you're always expected to uh, prepare for being the next monarch. If you want to do something else, tough luck. You can't do that. Except in a case I'm going to talk about later in this video. Because... Tradition? Why do we expect kids from a certain family to be better at being a head of state than another? When, in fact, as we talked about early in this video, this is not the case. This kind of hereditary structure also places a kind of coercion on kids to follow the norms that their parents and the media and society have set out for them. Think of it as if coercive education times a millions of people judging you in the future, uncertainty and basically being required to join a certain religion when you in fact may not. In the Netherlands that's Protestant, uh, I think other countries it could be Catholic, uh, Catholic or Islam or something like that. Um, yeah. And not having your own opinion, because that could cause issues with political neutrality and the lack of political power. For example, King Charles in the UK, almost immediately after being thrown as king, was exposed for his political beliefs. Most notably, he was a climate activist, but that doesn't matter when he's still a non-ruling monarch who mostly has a ceremonial function and should not be influencing anyone at all. Except they do. Through the media and potentially through religion as well. Yeah, why is the monarch always expected to behave a certain way? Because of some arbitrary tradition that has basically just beyond useless at this point. When you restrict someone in their freedom, it should always only be to protect others from harm or interference in their freedoms, but never for any kind of so-called tradition. And that finally leads to the last and possibly the most important problem I'm going to talk about related to hereditary monarchy. That is it is absolutely undemocratic. Why? Because nobody elected the monarch. Democracy means that the people make decisions related to their country. In a modern sense more specifically, that means that people elect representatives who represent them. And vastly, you should be able to elect the head of state as well because they to an extent, represent the entire country of people. And that is exactly, by the way, what one of the alternatives to a, a monarchy looks like, a republic, but not venturing off the path again. The monarch is not elected. He or she mostly he, has inherited their status from their parents and has been conditioned by their parents in order to accept it. They have not been elected, which is a two-side problem. Again, first, the monarch might not have chosen to be a king or queen or prince or princess at all. And second, the people maybe don't want them to become the next head of state. Um, which, wait a second, the king actually has certain level of direct political power, usually they have to sign the laws, and there has been a scandal in Belgium about that not happening, which has led to the king being temporarily removed from his office and then put back immediately afterwards. Wow. 
A king who actually uses his political powers to potentially even express his political opinion. That is why a prince or princess cannot have her own opinion. That is why King Charles was exposed immediately for having one. Because they're not elected. People who can make important decisions about a country should ideally all be to a level elected by the people either directly or through a honest and definitely not at all corrupt committee of representatives who are chosen directly by the people i.e. parliament now that immediately brings us to alternatives to the idea of hereditary monarchy which are far more democratic there are actually just potentially two of them. There is the presidential and the parliamentary republic. So they may seem like the same thing, but there's a huge difference between the two. A parliamentary republic is the kind in which the president has executive powers. This can also include limited legislative powers. Aside from a congress which has the primary legislative power. Now this type of power can easily uh, invite populists to uh, join the tribe of president-elect and when they win, change everything back to how it was. For example, Donald Trump or Vladov Budlokovsky. The second type is the parliamentary republic and it is, as far as I know, the ideal solution to uh, abolishing the hereditary monarchy. And it basically indicates that you just replace the system of hereditary monarchy with a directly or indirectly elected president who just goes on to continue their duties of head of state, including the ability to sign laws and all the other things that monarchy shouldn't do, but that a president could be able to do uh, because now, you know, they have elective power, they are elected by the people. Did I use the word elective or elected power? Okay. Um, and, but the president mostly has a ceremonial role in this system, uh, which means that they don't hold executive power as the head of the government. A great example of this is Germany, where you have the federal president whose name I don't even know because I'm not a German, and you have the Federal Chancellor, Angela Merkel. Um, she was, and maybe still is, uh, who actually controls the government and their long-term structure within the laws that have been set up by the Federal Council, the Bundestag. Uh, so I really do hope that the Netherlands can come down and realise that what we really need for democracy is a form of parliamentary republic. Kind of like what the last monarchy to have left this system of hereditary monarchy has done, Barbados. They have left the United Kingdom uh, and the British Commonwealth completely behind and therefore they have now turned into a parliamentary republic. Anyway, see you next time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.